Mastery in Farriery Trade is a thorough four-year apprentice-based course aimed at covering a wide range of theoretical and practical applied work to produce qualified farriers. We teach and deliver the Certificate 3 in Farry, the apprenticeship program, uh, which goes for a duration of four years. The students come here to Epping as part of block release training and they're employed by a master farrier working in the equine industry and attending to all their foot care needs. The Certificate 3 in Farrier E-Trade course is taught as block release training over a period of four years. In the first year there's a lot of theory components that need to be addressed, um, you know, for example reporting mechanisms, especially with workplace accidents and also what we call near miss and hazards. Obviously that's a skill that needs to be learnt and students need to be then become independent and make their own judgments. Also in first year, our apprentices make their own tools. This is um, a very traditionally blacksmithing method. The process starts by a simple introduction and basic metal skills. Today we're going to make a pritchel. Okay, it's part of your toolkit in shoe making. It's a heavy duty piece of machinery to knock out, although a simple tool when used. If used correctly, it will make some excellent nail holes, okay? You will need your ear protection today. And basically all we need is just a hammer and a pair of hollow bit tongs, okay? So let's forge this out on the pike of the anvil. Just pull it through all the time. And then we progress to a step-by-step -step procedure of mixing rather advanced tools. Uh, the process of teaching that can be broken down into segments and also the skills can be taught individually or as a whole and then we piece these uh, tools together to actually make our own horseshoes and also while you're making them they have the opportunity then to actually sharpen because we have a lot of knives in this trade and sharp objects so keeping the tools sharp and, um, and clean and in good working order and maintain and repair them is what's required. From making your own tools you gain the skills like you um, learn to use the tongs and where to like grip your pritchel and where to work it around the anvil and you like work your hand around and learn to use your hammer. This is your pritchel. Uh, we make this out of H13 tool steel. And um, this is your stamp. And when you make a nail hole, you grab your stamp like that. You give it whack until it bottoms. And then you get your pritchel and you put it over the nail hole. And then you whack it through, which clears the slug out. So then you have a nail hole so you can nail your shoes on. The skill of actually making horseshoes is one of the hardest things to learn in the trade. It's taught at a very early stage of the apprenticeship, uh, whereby if the student gains those skills, it leads into what we call the process of shaping and fitting a horseshoe. The stages of making a horseshoe is a metal skill, and uh, it has certain engineering qualities and dimensions. There's a lot of um, calculations involved to fit a horse's foot exactly. Two inches were marked from the end of the bar. To allow for the bar, doubling your thickness and the weld there. A lot of it also can be taught on the job too uh, and we should not forget the, the employers that actually assist with that process as well. In the first year apprentices learn OHS in the workplace, complete OHS scenario reports, respond to emergencies in the equine industry and administer first aid, use and manufacture tools used in the farrier industry, learn to make basic horseshoes, learn equine anatomy and physiology, handle horses safely, and learn basic horseshoeing skills. The second year mainly focuses on where we have business studies, and uh, in the area of practicality we have welding classes, where they have to make adaptations and variations of different types of horseshoes that can be used in racing and harness racing and to increase the horse's gait, to increase performance, or indeed uh, relieve a problem or indeed a, a form of therapy uh, from recovering from injury. So welding, we use arc welding, we use MIG welding, we use oxyacetylene processes for cutting and welding. And also the key one which is very traditional is the fire welding. Uh, that can be done with solid fuel which is coke or coal and also LPG gas. I like this course because it's really hands on, like most of the stuff we do is practical. There's a fair bit of theory with it, but it's mainly practical and really hands-on. The idea of being able to take like a bare bit of metal and turn it into a horseshoe to be able to shoe the horse with it just uh, interests me. 
just because you're benefiting the horse. There's a lot of horses out there in the world to be shot, and this, this job can take you all over the world, you know, all parts of Europe, America, England, uh, everywhere. In second year, they can uh, are taken to a different level of making shoots for minor faults and problems and working around little incidents which occur in everyday equine hoof care. So the advancement is then gets further and they get assessed accordingly on their ability to work around those problems and solve them uh, in an unaided capacity. Also, the electronic age has come into our industry now and they can certainly uh, develop a plan there. In the second year we throw in the business modules of training where they can do Excel, they do a business plan uh, and bookkeeping skills and that's actually done in the computer lab with our facility here and, and use the equipment and uh, better themselves. When they get into the area of being a subcontractor when they are employed or indeed a self-employed farrier. In the second year, apprentices weld using arc, MIG, oxyacetylene and forge welding, use power tools as part of a project, complete business studies including Excel, bookkeeping and stock tech, learn equine lower leg anatomy, dissection and physiology, learn to shoe and apply different styles of shoeing for fast work, performance, roadster and leisure work, and learn to trim and shoe for moderate faults and defects in horses' limbs and feet. Tuesday morning normally we'll come in here and then he'll do a practical demonstration. He'll fabricate some sort of shoe. Last time we were doing welding in heart bar inserts and then he'll show us that practical and then we'll go away in the afternoon and we'll We'll weld that heart bar in. Now, the Wednesday morning we'll come in and we'll meet at the welding shop. We'll um, do a number of different weldings. as MIG, ARC, oxyacetylene welding, the correct way of doing it. And in the afternoon we'll come in, um, we'll do shoemaking in the afternoon. Once again, Colin will give a demonstration or we'll carry on with what we did yesterday. The tongs cool, see how they're steaming hot there. Stops the heat travelling up the hat rains. On a Thursday, Colin teacher usually brings the horses down from the farm, which is about half hour away. Sometimes they bring down the Clydesdales and the ponies, so you just incorporate your different styles of shoeing into what we're doing. In the third year, apprentices will have a working knowledge of diseases and infections of the equine lower limb, conditions affecting the equine lower limb, advanced manufacturing processes of horseshoes, trimming and shoeing of equines with severe faults and defects from foals to mature horses, advanced equine lower leg anatomy and physiology, and planning, reporting and working in teams to solve equine hoof care related problems. In the fourth year of the apprenticeship, uh, this is mainly done on the job. They are given um, an assignment project to do. And what is it in that scenario is that they have to develop a written report on a given situation and condition of a horse that requires farrier treatment. Uh, they can do this electronically, obviously manually as well, and then also they have to do a lower leg dissection, give a talk about that in, in depth, about the knowledge they have gained over the years, and also make special horseshoes for the case scenario. In the fourth year, apprentices will work in teams and with peers, complete a horseshoeing case scenario assignment and research project, complete an advanced equine lower leg dissection and autopsy, and give a presentation of case scenario and findings from the autopsy. The career pathway after completing their apprenticeship can lead to many different areas. First, primarily, the apprentice will be employed back into the original business which employed them in the first place. That will then service an equine enterprise, like a racing stable, harnessed racing. Also, they can then become a subcontractor and self-employed and start up their own business and indeed then some of them are employed by race clubs to do race day procedures and also then some choose to travel overseas or work with different businesses themselves throughout Australia and indeed the world. 
So they are highly sought after their skills, and um, it is a great career and, 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 and um, a profession and trade to choose. After this course, I'd like to start up my own business. Hopefully go overseas with it or something like that. Hopefully travel throughout Australia, shoeing horses. Course prerequisites require that all apprentices must be 16 years of age when beginning the course and must have basic literacy and numeracy skills up to Year 9. All 20 modules of the certificate must be satisfactorily completed for students to become an accredited farrier. Epping campus is transport friendly, located directly opposite Epping station, or a short walk from the bus stop. Facilities include student library, canteen, spacious free student parking and wide open grounds. NMIT Epping Campus is located at the corner of Cooper Street and Dalton Road, Epping, Victoria 3076, Australia. For further information and inquiries, contact the Agriculture and Animal Science Department on 92691042 or visit our website nmit.vic.edu.au and follow the links.